One man, one mission, to rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Warriors, welcome to episode number 121 of the Anxiety Guy podcast. I'm Dennis Simsek. So grateful to have you listening to this podcast episode where I'll be talking about the top 10 words you must replace if you suffer from anxiety. What do I mean by words? I'm talking about the way you communicate with other people, the types of words that you use with other people, but also the types of words that you use with yourself, your internal self-talk. So I'm going to dive deep into these two areas. We're going to fix it together, and we're going to get you on the road to recovery, my friends. Now, internal self-talk and the words you express are all energy. Energy is what creates or destroys homeostasis in your body as well as what shapes your external circumstances. So let's understand energy a little bit better. You know, I used to say things like, I don't want to live like this anymore. But the truth was, I was scared of living any other way. That was the truth. Truly living was just as scary as dying due to the question marks I had about what it would be like whether I'd be accepted, and if I actually had what it took to maintain a pleasant lifestyle. So many anxiety sufferers go through these question marks on a daily basis. They are scared of living as much as they are scared of dying. Inner healing, my friends, doesn't just show up in your life. Inner healing starts with the understanding that what happened to you in your life must be viewed entirely different. The weight you're carrying around must lighten up. These are what's called repressed emotions, and they are destroying your ability to see the joys of life that are sitting right in front of you. Seeing your anxiety as the enemy leads to seeing yourself as the enemy. Nothing changes until your viewpoints change over the things that are currently hindering your ability to enjoy life. Now, these words are consistent when they come to an anxiety sufferer's life. I'm going to dive deep into them. We're going to fix them. We're going to replace them. And we're going to get to a much more neutral to pleasant place emotionally, my friends. The first word or words that need to be replaced are coping slash managing. How many times do we hear this in an anxiety sufferer's life? I can't help But cope with this. How do I cope with this better? How do I manage my symptoms better? These are signals that you're sending to your subconscious mind that you just want to manage them, that you just want to cope with your life, that you just want to get by. Now, what's the replacement to coping and managing? Eliminating. When I can begin to talk to myself and to other people in a way where I am eliminating, I am working on eliminating these symptoms, these inner critical voices that I have, these behaviors that don't serve me anymore, when I begin to use the word eliminating rather than coping and managing, I am sending a direct signal to my mind of what I want, not what I want to manage and keep in my life. So the first one is coping and managing that is now replaced to eliminating. Make sure you write these things down. Number two, difficult. You'll hear people always say, it's difficult. It's more difficult than anybody understands. It's the most difficult thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. Difficult changed into challenging. This is a challenging time in my life. These people around me, these toxic people, are challenging. These situations where I start to feel a little anxious is challenging. How does that make you feel when you replace the word difficult with challenging? All of a sudden... It's within your grasp. It's not something that will take some kind of a massive struggle to overcome. Now, because it's challenging, you tap into your internal skill sets that you have within yourself to overcome that challenge. The next one is 
can't do this, replaced with practice time. So, I can't do this, replaced with, hey, this is a time to practice, meaning this situation that bugs me and creates these symptoms and these thoughts, I get to practice the skill sets. I get to practice the proper mindset when I approach these places. Great. What a better way to look at those situations. The fourth one is I am. So a lot of people say I am anxiety. I am depression. I have this or I have that. You internalize this. You create an identity around it. We're going to replace I am with I'm doing. I'm doing these things in a way that makes me feel more anxious. Powerful. Powerful. When you begin to replace these words, my friends. The next word that we're going to replace, my friends, is the word try. You'll hear a lot of anxiety sufferers use this word. I've tried that or I'm trying this. And the truth is that the word try signifies an inability to complete something. We're going to replace trying with committing. I'm going to commit to working with this person. I'm going to commit to this program. I'm going to commit to this supplement. All of a sudden, The words that you use are being expressed in your behavior and your internal energy systems will then pick up on these words. So you're not just trying something, now you're committing to something, which means that you will get the outcome that you want if you persevere and you are patient on that path, my friends. So trying replaced with committing. The next word that we're going to replace is never. Never as in, I'll never get there. You'll hear that all the time. Now, again, when I'm talking about these words, I'm not belittling anxiety suffers. I've been using these words for decades in my life. I say that I suffered from anxiety for six years, but the truth is that my anxiety started way back when, started very, very early. As far as the debilitating anxiety disorder, yes, six years, but... For a lot of us, it started way back when with some emotional traumas in our lives. We struggled when we were younger. So again, going back to this word, never. I'll never get there. Never being replaced with in time. In time. I will get there in time. If I have the patience in time, I will get to my desired emotional state. The next word is awful feelings. Two words. So... In my life, I'll give you an example. I used to talk to people saying, oh, I have this awful feeling in my chest right now. Or I've got this awful feeling in my head right now. And instead of describing what you're feeling in this way, what you're going to do is you're going to label it as uncomfortable. I've got this uncomfortable feeling in my chest. I've got this uncomfortable feeling in my head. Using the word uncomfortable means that you can tap into solutions. You can tap into your problem-solving models, your skills that you have with you, your mindsets, to begin reshaping the way you see your symptoms and therefore yourself. So replacing the words awful feeling with uncomfortable is very, very powerful. Do you do this? The next word is, I'm a failure, or multiple words, I'm a failure. Meaning, I'm a failure. I'll never get to where I want to get to. I'm a failure because I never was able to make the high school basketball team. I'm a failure because I just can't seem to get that career or start that business that I want. I'm just a failure. No, no, no. You're not a failure. The words that you're going to be using starting today is, I'm in a transition. I'm in a transition to getting that career. I'm in a transition to tapping into my desired emotional state. I'm in a transition right now. What a powerful word. Transition. Hmm. Imagine if you use transition more. I'm in a transition. He's in a transition. She's in a transition. How much lighter do you feel? The next word is, I failed. So a lot of people say, I failed at this and I failed at that. Truth is that I learned. Your replacement is, I learned. So if there's something in your life where you feel like you failed at or you just didn't accomplish the goals that you you set out for yourself, you didn't fail. You learned. What did you learn? Think about it. The next words that anxiety sufferers use on a daily basis is, it's too hard. 
You'll hear them say, it's too hard to recover from anxiety. It's too hard to deal with this person. No, no, no. The words that you're going to start using are, it's testing. It's testing. It's testing me right now. When you use the words, it's testing, you can see all of a sudden that the light at the end of the tunnel gets a little brighter. It's testing. This time right now that I'm going through, it's testing. This person, it's testing. And I use this word consistently in my life, and I started to examine the things that were causing me anxiety at a deeper level. Instead of just labeling something as being hard and then giving up on it or just trying, I started to say it's testing or things such as it's challenging. Now, I want you to understand this, my friends. You can fix you. Don't allow the emotional part of your mind to dictate what you believe about yourself and the world. Seeing into the darkness is in fact clarity, meaning understand your fears better, understand your anxiety better, understand yourself better. It's in the moments of inner chaos where you have your greatest potential for human growth. Don't settle. Question your limiting core beliefs and freedom is yours in time. I love you so much. You are more than anxiety. See you soon. Thanks for being an important part of the Anxiety Guy podcast community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive rate and review. If you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety, head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful End the Anxiety program based around the CBT model. If you're searching for a more one-on-one approach, you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with Dennis via Skype. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next episode.